Hello, I'm Evan Park. Now we'll be reading St. Sebastian from the book Stories of the Saints, written by Carrie Wallace and illustrated by Nick Thornborough. When Sebastian was still a teenager, he joined the Roman army. He didn't really want to be a soldier. He was a Christian and the emperor, Diocletian, had ordered his army to find all the Christians and kill them. So Sebastian joined the army to try to help the Christians the emperor wanted to kill. Sebastian turned out to be a good soldier, so he was quickly promoted to the Praetorian Guard, an elite troop that guarded the emperor himself. It was Sebastian's job to protect the man who was killing his friends, an even stranger, the emperor grew to like him. But whenever he could steal away, Sebastian spent all his free time with Christians who were waiting to be executed in the Roman prisons. When they were killed, he buried them, even though the emperor had declared it a crime to give a Christian a proper burial. A Roman jailer, Nicostratus, noticed Sebastian's faith. The jailer's wife, Zoe, hadn't been able to speak for years, so he asked Sebastian to pray. As soon as Sebastian did, she could speak again. So Nicostratus brought all his prisoners to hear Sebastian talk about Jesus, and all of them were baptized, including Zoe and Nicostratus. Sebastian had also been talking with Tiberius, the son of Commodius, the local prefect. When they heard the story Sebastian told about Jesus, both Tiberius and Chromatius became Christians, and Chromatius freed all his prisoners and all his slaves, quit his job as prefect, and moved to the country to follow God. <laughs> that got Diocletian's attention. Who's been turning my jailer and my prefects into Christians, he asked. When he found out it was Sebastian, a member of his own trusted God, he was furious. Diocletian ordered that Sebastian be taken to a training field that archers used for target practice. Sebastian was tied to a stake. His fellow soldiers shot him full of arrows until he looked like a spiny sea urchin. Then they left him for dead. But a Christian woman named Irene, the wife of one of Diocletian's servants, went to collect Sebastian's body. To her amazement, she discovered that the arrows hadn't killed him. So she hid him in her house and nursed him back to health. As soon as Sebastian was healed, he put on his uniform and took his place again in the Praetorian Guard. Diocletian was shocked to see the soldier he thought he'd killed talking and walking around. He thought Sebastian had returned from the grave to terrify him. As the emperor cowered in fear, Sebastian rebuked him for his crimes against the Christians in Rome. What you do to us is evil, he said. What have any of us ever done to deserve such treatment? What makes you so afraid? <laughs> At this, Diocletian's fear turned to wrath. He ordered Sebastian killed again, but this time he wasn't taking any chances. He had Sebastian beaten to death with clubs, and then he ordered his body thrown into the sewers for good measure. That night, a Christian woman named Lucina had a vision of Sebastian. He told her where his body lay, and she searched through the dark sewers until she found him. And she buried him in the catacombs below Rome, just as Sebastian had buried so many other Christians before. The end.